That's right, we're back. Back at the ranch and out of water. Yeah, so much for my organic cleaning situation. Here we have 110 gallons of high quality H2O. Needless to say, my well fix didn't fix anything yesterday. So we got the pros coming out. It's gonna be another wild day at the ranch. Stick with me, let's have some fun. Well, this is nice. I've got a gallery of spectators. Morning, guys. Morning, Evie. Check it out. Those are thirsty animals. And of course, Mr. Dodge, up close and personal. So I've got to say, this little Bauer transfer pump that I bought at Harbor Freight, man, I have put some hours on that thing. Many, many, many hours on this little guy. And it has come in very handy. I recommend having a transfer pump around. You never know when or what you're gonna need from that thing. I'm just trying to get enough water out of these barrels so I can just tip them over and dump them in this little water trough. Oh, wow, what a day. And no, this isn't the only source of water these guys have. Oh, he's gonna get me. Here on the ranch, um, they have a pond that's about a quarter of the way full down there. The water's kind of nasty. I don't want that to be their only water source right now, so that's why I'm doing this. Hauling a little water, just get everything, getting everything ready until the professionals arrive to troubleshoot our well. Ah, oh, yeah. Whew. That is heavy. Whew. Man, it is so easy to take water for granted. When you've got to go get it, haul it, and distribute it how you need it in a system that is not efficient in any way, shape, or form, really makes you appreciate being able to, you know, turn the faucet, use an automatic float, and enjoy crisp, cool, clean water. Holy cow. So I just heard from the well guy, he is headed this way in about 30, 45 minutes. And uh, I don't know how far away he is, but I know he has a 254 area code. So I think I've got some time to knock some things out. Why am I down here? I'm sorry to keep talking. That's not real exciting at all. I've got a tape measure because I need a few spots that are covered to be at least eight feet seven inches high probably more so over there but um, let's go ahead and take a look and see how tall these are this is one of the things on the list Whew. so eight foot seven inches right here and this actually reminds me of a really good pro tip i'm going to share with you momentarily so this this barn right here was built i don't know 60s maybe before then that is hot damn 106 inches all right which is 810 and this one over here that's nine feet nine feet so okay um pro tip that's going to make your life way better actually or might prevent you from having a bad time is um, when you look around places like this this barn was built like i said 1960s ish maybe earlier don't know when we bought this place nobody had been in here since like 90 i mean 1990 i mean it was it was crazy there, there was a big divider right here over there, there was a ton of hay. My first time in here, we saw a couple of baby buzzards. They scared the hell out of me. I'm gonna cut to that video right here. Baby buzzards will scare the hell out of you. What do you think about that, Esco? 
right? So baby buzzards, they will scare the hell out of you. And uh, uh, long story short, this place was full of brown recluses, full of black widows, like this one right here. I'm going to cut to this video. And um, I learned one thing very quickly in environments like this and environments like the well house yesterday, the well video, um, these things are not your friends all the time. When you're going in somewhere dark, you're picking things up, um, even something that you might touch frequently, you know, this is a wonderful habitat for creepy qualies. Just um, take these off before you go in and you pick anything up because you're not going to see that black widow like on, you know, in their web right behind your water well when it's hot, it's 110 degrees, you're sweating, and you're just trying to get your mission done and get out of there. You don't want to get nailed by those things because that, it just, it just sucks. It's no fun. Um, here's what I saw in the well house yesterday. And that is why you take off your sunglasses when you're looking around your well. Gee, she is huge. Look at that. Dang. So, fortunately, I have not been nailed by any of the brown recluses or black widows, but I am no stranger to mishaps with arachnids. For some reason, everything I seem to grab when I'm not paying attention has scorpions on it. And man, that sucks. Scorpions suck big time. They sting like hell, and I think I'm allergic. But uh, I highly encourage you to not get stung by scorpions when you're screwing around with sticks on the ground or bricks or you know they're not in like shady places like that they're normally under logs and under things you're grabbing when you're not paying attention sometimes they're in your house like here central texas they are all over that place under that house around the house and unless you've got a really good seal they're in the house they're still going to find their way in i don't know how they do but they do don't tell the lady okay back at the well house Got some news. My guy from uh, Jackson Well Service arrived and uh, came out, did a quick assessment. Young guy. Absolutely awesome, by the way. They, uh, what, a, what an awesome group to hire great people like that who don't mind coming out on a Sunday to help you when you're in a bind. But he, uh, he unfortunately shared with me that he knows I'm in a bind, but he probably doesn't have good news. The, uh, the water is down around 55 feet so he, or so I learned from a, an awesome tool this guy had with some kind, some sort of sonar equipment. And um, what he's seeing this summer, especially amid this drought, is the water tables falling just a little bit. And after the water running all night on Friday night over there, he said it's likely this well could be done. All right, it is Friday. September 2nd, 2022. As you can see, I just finished another run. I've got my blue barrels in the back, which that only does one water trough, and that's good for, I don't know, two cows for one day. <laughs> so as it turns out, you know, when you're, uh, when you're down on water, you learn how much water is actually consumed on a ranch, and oh my goodness. Whew. So, each cow, you know, on a hot day like this, and every day in Texas is hot in August and September, they, uh, they're going to drink about 40, you know, up to 50 gallons of water per day. You know, multiply that by, you know, nine big cows and five calves right now. The calves, I don't even count. We'll say 10. Um, you know, that alone, that's 500 gallons. And then you have four donkeys that, I don't know, I guess they're about 400 pounds a piece at 9% of their body weight. Um, that's about how much water they'll drink every day, which is a considerable amount, it's crazy. So, uh, you know, we're looking about 600, 650 gallons of water a day we're going through. Thank God there's about two feet of water in one of those ponds. We got a half an inch of rain the other day. It was glorious, it was beautiful. It was Wednesday. I watched ranch cam number one for probably 30 minutes just watching the rain. I was so happy. 
Oh, and uh, fast forward through a crazy week. And by the way, oh my God, we forgot the uh, camera. I don't know, maybe it was a chupacabra. Maybe the cattle grew opposable thumbs, but somehow they got out on, was that Wednesday night? I think Wednesday night. So it's, you know, it's about 8.30, it's been a long day, you're working all day, and you're ready to go to bed, and then I check the ranch camera as I always do, just to see what's happening. I cycle through the different cameras, and I see cattle in the yard. I thought, well, that's strange. That must be a trick of the eye. They must be on the other side of the fence. Nope. Chiquita was the primary culprit, and uh, she had her little guy with her, and they were dancing around, and all of them were out. So we, uh, Lady and I jumped in the truck, got the cattle. Man, that's the worst feeling. That is the worst feeling. And all of you, a lot of you know what I'm talking about. You get that call, we're like, hey, uh, you know, you the guy with those red cows? At that moment, your stomach goes to your throat, and you think, oh my God, where are they? Are they on the highway? Are they on train tracks? You know, and last thing in the world you want is something happening to your cattle or God forbid, you know, somebody getting hurt, you know, on the road. So uh, for fortunately, that was a best case scenario situation. They didn't make it past the Johnson grass. They hung out, we got to the ranch, put them away, made it back like 11.30, we're chilling out, go to bed, get up, do it again on Thursday. So uh, today, very, very crazy day. Had all kinds of stuff to do at the ranch today. I took the day off work. Well, kind of. Had some conference calls here and there. Um, had a few appointments. But um, one, delivered some water to the cattle. Uh, gave them some protein because I've still got young mamas that are nursing. They still need their protein. Um, check the grass. The grass is amazing. We've had just a little bit of rain and man, this place comes back to life so quickly. It just blows my mind when you think there's no hope whatsoever for your pastures. But, uh, you know, since I was gonna be out all day, I, I booked everything around these little guys. Everybody's got their fresh bandanas. They went for their um, annual wellness checkup at the vet, and while they were there, they got uh, groomed and bathed. Uh, so everybody's healthy, everybody's happy. They've got fancy haircuts. That was nice. And while they were at the retreat in LaGrange, I went and met a professional researcher who's been researching our ranch and the history of the land and all the titles and all the deeds going all the way back to the original title deed of the property, which was October of 1832, I think. And I'm operating from memory here. And I've got the entire history, everyone that's ever owned it, everybody born on that place who's had a claim to it. And uh, just what a fascinating history this place has. Starting with the guy that originally um, bought the place, um, or it was originally deeded to him in October of 1832, died in November of 1832 and uh, then went to his wife who survived him for a short while and then to his children and there were like six or seven of them and you know you follow their individual history it's crazy goes through the hands of several families and ends present day with lady and myself and chloe of course because it'll be hers after we're gone our goal is to hold on to this not to flip it not to sell it you know in texas i think You'd be wise to only buy land, never sell. Never, never, never sell. Wild day, you'll catch more of us this weekend. I wanna put this in the uh, the well video because I think it falls into you know the well category, hauling water. Uh, I am bringing a 3,500 gallon water tank to the ranch to temporarily hold water um, while we're drilling a new well. The, um, the young guy, by the way, didn't work out, totally ghosted me the second day. So I take back all those really nice things I said about him. Um, I was glad that he came out on Sunday and gave me bad news. But, you know, after that total ghost show, so that was unfortunate. But the, um, 
the old guy in Schulenburg, the guy that's been drilling wells and taking care of our well for 50 years. Man, I, I sweet-talked him out of retirement, and I'm so glad because there's nobody with experience like him, especially in our area, with our soil, with the water tables down below. I mean, he, he's forgotten more about, you know, drilling wells and maintaining wells in my area than a lot of people will ever know. So I, I feel very, very fortunate to have him in my corner. He's also going to be the one who plums up the, uh, the external storage tank. He's going to fill it for me. Um, he's going to put in a new pump to uh, pump water through my lines so the, uh, the workers have water, the house has water until we're able to drill. And he said he'll be able to, he's going to squeeze me in between now and the end of the year, which is crazy. The closest I've gotten with any other contractor out here is eight months out. So, uh, man, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate to have him on our team. So I will, uh, in this video, I will walk you through, you know, those crazy processes and however in the hell I'm going to haul that 3,500 gallon tank to the ranch and get it set up. I will have the uh, help and support of a new toy, though, that you will see very soon. Um, yeah, man, that's what I know. And um, for those of you who are supporting the channel and uh, watching our videos and, and helping share the word and, and uh, subscribing, I'm really, really appreciative of your help and support. This is a new endeavor. We're committed to it, even when it's not convenient. Um, it's crazy. The only thing harder than starting a ranch in 2022 is starting a ranch with the whole world watching while you screw things up. <laughs> but, but that's what it's all about. There were some really great people on YouTube who did the same thing and inspired me and I learned so much from them and if I can pay that forward, you know, I really, uh, really hope to do so. But uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of uh, the rest of this video it's going to be a wild ride I have no idea how it's going to unfold but we'll do the best we can and uh, God knows it's probably not gonna go according to plan but hopefully we'll have a positive outcome in the end So we've had about a half an inch of rain and the results are absolutely breathtaking here. Those are mostly weeds in that middle pasture over there. But see everything green? Even the trees are a deeper, darker shade of green. They were so thirsty. And this grass is so beautiful to see at the beginning of September because we have plenty of time to get our second spring on here in Texas and uh, get some growth before it all goes dormant this winter. Wow, so fortunate. And uh, hopefully we get uh, just a little more growth and uh, I, I might actually even knock out some, some mowing beforehand. You know, try to knock down some of these weeds so we can get a nice lush carpet of grass. Mr. Dodge, what do you think about all this beautiful grass? Morning, ladies. Good morning. Everybody's looking good today. Not too skinny. And Fernie, bringing up the rear over there. She'll make it in eventually. So thank goodness we've got some pretty gnarly clouds forming. We're supposed to have rain today. And I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping they're right and we get some serious runoff because right now the, um, that pond is the primary water source for our cattle and that's where we're going. So I, I picked up some pond dye on the way in this morning. That, um, that pond, I think, has about 18 inches of water in it, we'll show you. And um, with it heating up and being shallow, it gets warmer, a little bit of sunshine, it's just more susceptible to crazy stuff growing. 
and I want to limit that as much as possible. And I think the pond die is probably our best, our best bet there. Hold on, big guy. I've always loved this spot. It is absolutely beautiful when we have water. Right now you can see this little pond and uh, there are always snakes over here, by the way. Always without exception. There goes one right there. He's gonna pop his little head up any minute. But you can see all this, this top layer of just green nastiness growing here. Uncool. Um, I don't want anything starving this water of oxygen because we still do have fish in the bottom here um you know i just learned we have tires in the middle of the pond uncool i'm all about fish habitat but i like natural material not tires but uh what i'm going to do here is put in some blue pond dye uh, i'm going to put it over here because the cattle aren't going to be entering here they're not going to be drinking over here and hopefully we get some disturbance to the water today as it rains. Well, I thought they wouldn't be drinking right here, but maybe they will. I suppose a great way to uh, gauge the depth of the pond, I can look at Honky Tonk over there, and she's into her belly, so that's positive. It's okay, Esco. This is, this is too funny not to share. Esco does not like that. It's okay, big guy. If you want to take a bite out of Dodge, you can. It's okay, big guy. It's okay. Stay, stay, stay. Whew. So let me show you what we bought. Crystal blue pond dye. This stuff is uh, non-toxic. It won't hurt your fish. won't hurt your animals. It uh, just does a great job in adding a nice deep blue color to the water, preventing the light from penetrating, preventing too much stuff from growing, especially the stuff that grows on bottom. It's just not gonna have enough light. The, uh, the one downside to this stuff, you don't wanna put it in right where your animals are drinking because if they drink the concentrate, that's not good for them. And two, if you get it on your hands, you will be a Smurf for a while. It's just, you're not, there's no way to get around it. And this stuff does not come off. It's gonna take at least a couple of days. Let's go ahead and add some to the pond get this on me and not to be bit by a big black snake because we have plenty of those and I do not have a cannon with me. Normally when I drop this in I like to agitate the water. Um, I'm hoping the rain agitates the water and helps this spread. I don't want to put too much in one spot in case those girls come over here. Should not have them in the water while I'm doing this, but, you know, what are you going to do? It's not necessary to agitate the water. It normally does it on its own. I'm just trying to, kind of in a hurry, to get it to spread out. I don't want my cattle walking through a big puddle of blue and ending up with blue guts and blue hooves and blue legs, blue noses, like a bunch of kids who just ate blue raspberry slurpees. So we, uh, I put the dye in the water, agitated the water a little bit, and now I'm kind of hoping for a nice little downpour that'll stir this up, some wind. So far, everybody's staying out. She would be brown and blue if she came over here. Dodge, you're coming with me. We're gonna go back there. Just follow me like you always do. These guys, they're just hanging out. Little Miss Evie. Stay out of the blue. Okay, well hopefully that does something. And hopefully we get some runoff from the rain coming today. I know we're supposed to have a major cool front coming through. It's gonna be like 87, 88 is a high versus the 98 to 105. A much welcomed change. Today is fun for the entire family. Even this big guy. Oh, poor Esco. It's like an episode of Sanford and Son around here. Check that out. That is a 
3,000 gallon water tank. Rather large, right? You think this would last forever for a single household and a few cows? Nope. 600 gallons a day, that sucker is going to be gone in no time. So, uh, step one, got to get there. It's not exactly aerodynamic, but we're not above using luck as a strategy. Not a real head ranch. The uh, lady is just riddled with anxiety, <laughs> and I'm hoping we can get there without any problems. Stay tuned, we'll keep you posted. Inch of rain did wonder. What do you think, big guy? That was what you call a white knuckler. You know, where your grip around the windshield is so tight that your knuckles turn white. Whew. Ladies are recuperating from the drive. Took much longer than expected. But we, um, I think that is going to be our most level spot for the tank. Power's inside this little well house here. We have some workers here, which is nice on uh, Labor Day. Oh, poor guy. He's been holding that for an hour. Whew. Cattle fed. 3,500 gallon water tank deployed. Pump put into the well house for the well guy. Right, kiddo? Yes. Sweet. One gate lady. And we are missing one donkey. There's Tammy and Tink. Dusty. We're missing Fernie. We shall find the fern. Well, we've come to the end of the episode. I'm happy to report one success from all of this. The, uh, the pond dye seems to have worked. You can see that turquoise color in the water. That um, It's not just for aesthetics purposes. That'll prevent a lot of the light from getting down to the bottom, keep things from growing. You can already tell you just don't have quite as much of that crazy slimy stuff on top. That looks good. Hopefully that will also reduce the, um, the rate of evaporation. So this will hold. All I need is just a few more days. Uh, within the next day or two, we'll have that tank uh, pumping water up top. Uh, fresh water in the water trough. For the, uh, for the cattle and for the donkeys. Ah, and we're uh, one step closer to a new well. They're my non-joiners. Hello, non-joiners. Hello. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, stick with us. You know, we have all kinds of crazy adventures to go. If you haven't subscribed yet, we'd love to have you back. Um, have you join us as we continue to start up this ranch in 2022 and um, botch everything along the way. Not gonna use this, not at all. But I would like to have you back. All right, guys.